Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Today on Sports Files, I'll talk football with Tennessee head coach Butch Jones and round ball with Memphis women's coach Melissa McFerrin and star senior guard Ariel Hearn. Later in the show, Tennessee Vols head football coach Butch Jones sits down with me for a candid one-on-one -on -one interview, fresh off the Big Orange's win against Georgia. But first, let's talk some hoops. The University of Memphis women's basketball team is gearing up for a new season on the hardwood, but go into the campaign currently in a dry spell. The Tigers have failed to reach the postseason each of the last two seasons. Head coach Melissa McFerrin is entering her eighth season at the helm, and there suddenly seems to be a sense of urgency. McFerrin is the Tigers' third winningest coach in their history and has three seasons of 20 or more victories at Memphis under her belt. But the program has struggled to stay in the upper tier of the American Athletic Conference. This season, the Tigers had their entire starting five back. In fact, nearly all their scoring from a season ago returns, and McFerrin is hopeful the chemistry and experience will take the team a long way. Today, the state of the Memphis women's basketball program with head coach Melissa McFerrin and star senior guard Ariel Hearn. And it's next on Sports Files. Coach, great to have you. Ariel, you're already laughing. What's going on? How are you? I'm just happy to be here. I'm good. Yeah, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank Another you. season, Melissa. I know you guys are fired up. All five starters back. First time for you here at Memphis. 96.8% of your scoring from last year. Bunch of rebounding, a bunch of this, a bunch of that. I would imagine the expectations are pretty high for you guys. The expectations are very high in our own camp. We had no seniors last year. We, we lost no one to graduation. We returned every player, and we've added four additional players to our team. We're led by four seniors, um, which I would imagine all are going to be in the starting lineup. So we feel like this is our time. We've spent the last two years getting ready to play in this new conference. Um, when Ariel was a sophomore, we were very, very young in our first year, started three sophomores and two freshmen in that year, but now we feel like we've made the proper transition to be able to compete in the American Athletic Conference. Ariel, I would imagine that having your teammates back, the starters that you've played along with, to have that chemistry is very pivotal for this team to have success. Oh, it's great. It's great to have Mariah Riza back. I feel like she's going to be 100% this year. Ajana Fuqua Bay, I love her running the floor. Uh, when I get three rebounds, I know she's running up the floor looking for a fly layup. Brianna Wright, uh, she's big body down there in the post, and I expect to get a lot of rebounds and get a lot of points. You have been an all-AAC selection the last couple of years. You're 12th on the Memphis scoring list, which is amazing. you got a whole year to go. Uh, with that said, I would imagine you, you're, you're a team player. The most important thing to you is to get this team, help get this team back into the postseason. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Uh, Coach Melissa has been talking to me a lot about being a leader, uh, getting the postseason. I think that is our biggest goal this year. Uh, if we've reached it, I think that will be a great success for us. Um, as far as me, I'll keep doing what I've been doing, scoring the ball, assisting, rebounding, talking, being a leader. Tell me about her. Errol has been a player who, from the day she came to us, she loved to play the game. And she has grown from that player who just loved to play the game, um, who could score the basketball, who uh, brought a lot of energy to the floor. Is her freshman year, Ariel didn't really think she was going to be a defender. Now we've got a player who is now really bought into not only scoring but creating for others and truly has become our best defender. I think the final piece for Ariel is the leadership piece, and I think she's really serious about carrying that responsibility this year for our team. Ariel, describe your coach. What type of coach is Melissa? She's a great coach. Uh, she has a lot of knowledge. I say that about her all the time. She's very intelligent. Um, someday she can get a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> what's not to expect that in a head coach? So I expect that um, each and every day uh, she pushes us hard. Uh, she pushes us to be a great team, and she also pushes me to be a great 
player. What's the most important thing you've learned over your tenure at Memphis? What have I learned the most? It could be on the court or even off the court. Maybe something that uh, you've learned from being a part of this team. Um, what I have learned, um, one thing I, say, I can say I learned from Melissa, um, whenever I'm not having a good day, now, whenever I come to practice, um, she told me about this 10-step plan. Uh, my last sentence says before I walk into the gym, I just clear my mind, clear my head about everything that's going on, no matter if it's good or bad, and basketball is my main focus for the next couple of hours. Without getting into too much depth, 10-step plan, give me an idea what that is. I would say we're in charge of our own attitude. At any moment, we can be in charge. That has nothing to do with the circumstances in our life or in the situation. So regardless of what's happened throughout the course of a day, the la my last 10 steps before I enter the gym floor are a time that I use to get my mind right and to be good for our team. And I think Ariel really wants to be a really great player every day. And she's bought into those things that not every day is a great day, not every day is cake and ice cream, but every mm -hmm. day we got to go to work and get better. We talked about the core, the starters that are back, and you said four new additions. One of those players, a player from Europe, first time. You have a couple of Canadians, but first time you've reached into Europe to bring in a player. Uh, tell me about her, and how is her English? Her English actually is pretty good. She's one of those young ladies from Montenegro who they were schooled in English. So I believe she speaks four languages. Um, she is a kid with a really, really good heart. She was dying to come to the States to play basketball and pursue her dream. So she is here really, really fresh, really, really motivated. We have begun to recruit overseas more because as the American game has developed, there aren't enough players here, particularly big players. So really? many of us go overseas mm -hmm. seeking more players to create our pro to enlarge our prospect pool and also to, to sign big players. This conference is tough. Everybody knows that. Ariel, is it a blessing or a curse to be in the same conference with Connecticut? Um, it's a blessing. It is a blessing. I love stepping on the court, no matter who the opponent is. Connecticut's is a great team. I love stepping on the floor to them. Uh, I love a challenge. Connecticut's a challenge. Melissa, you, anything can happen in sports, as we know. But it would take a titanic effort, probably a partial breakdown, for Connecticut to not win. So when you go into the conference, knowing that you could perform really well, but the chances to win the conference are, are very limited because there is Connecticut, which is a very special program. So how tough of a challenge is that in trying to sell that to recruits? Well, we sell a lot playing against the best, and not only UConn in our league, but um, South Florida is going to open up as number 15 in the rankings. Wow. Um, Temple is going to be very good. Tulane is going to be very good. So we talk about UConn, but that's not our focus. And I, I tell people all the time, it's not just the American Athletic Conference chasing UConn. The entire country is chasing UConn. Right. So we're not unique um, in that challenge. All right, major rule changes to the women's game. You're going four quarters. What type of a difference does that make? I'll get you in a second, Ariel. But, Coach, what does that mean in preparing for a season with this major rule change? I, I don't know that it's going to be a drastic change. We're, go, we're still going to have a timeout every five minutes as opposed to every four minutes. So there's going to be a little bit of a conditioning factor or a little bit of a substitution factor where you might sub at a four-minute media time, and now it's going to stretch to five. Um, the number of timeouts are going to be the same. We're not going to see any significant difference. Um, but I think it is going to be a mindset for our players to play that extra minute, and that will be a conditioning factor. Is Coach right with what she's saying? It's going to be more a mental thing for you, not so much a physical? I think it will be more mental. Um, going into four quarters, I think everybody's been used to that. Um, two two 20-minute halves, is, a lot of people said it's to be dragging. So I know for me, going into the fourth quarter, is just, you know, it's time to grind. Out of three quarters, whatever. If you're tired or not, the fourth quarter, it's time to go. Other rule changes that affect the game? Well, in addition to the four quarters, we are also advancing the basketball. Right. So very similar to what you see in the NBA or the WNBA. Um, but not the, the men's game. But not the men's game. The men are not doing this. The, I'm sure they will follow soon. I, I, I don't, not sure, but I would think. So the last 59.9 seconds of the game, assuming you do not advance the basketball by pass or dribble, um, before calling the timeout, we will actually be able to take the basketball to the 28-foot line in the front court. That does change things dramatically. That means a three-point game or even a four-point game on a short clock, um, you can make up a lot of time if you make a couple shots, get a steal, foul, call an advance, 
two times or even three times throughout the course of the end of the game. So I think that part is going to change the game dramatically, and it's going to keep the scores tighter as we go down the stretch, particularly if you have a player like Ariel who does a pretty good job of putting in that last bucket. Ariel, what do you expect from yourself and from the team this season, your senior year? What are your, your goals and aspirations for this final year? Um, first and foremost, get the postseason. Get the postseason with my team. Uh, be a leader, a great leader on and off the court as far as communication-wise. Keep being that energy person. Um, whenever things get tough and down for us, you know, be that person that continues to stay positive and encourage my teammates. Um, as far as um, a team, I think we're going to be great. Um, like Coach said, we got four returning starters. They were going to be great uh, running the floor wise. Um, new Canadian we got, going to be great for us. All of our other people are going to be great for us and our returners also. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. I know one day you may want to be doing what I do, being in this seat, <laughs> looking at that camera, and tell a recruit out there why they should come to the University of Memphis and follow Ariel Hearn. Uh, it's great. It's a great environment. Um, University of Memphis has a great women's basketball pro program, excuse me, um, led by a great coach, Melissa McFerrin. Very, very well done. Very well done. We'll be, we'll be looking forward to you in this seat one day. Many years from now after you're hopefully professional, do you want to play professional ball? Yes, sir, I do. What are her chances, you think? Ariel has got good chances. Um, Ariel already is identified as probably one of the top 15 or 20 guards in the country. Wow. Um, there will be some people looking at her this year, if not in person. They will be watching tape on her. Um, they're going to make sure that um, they know – um, can she play the point? That's going to be a question at the next level. Can she be a true combo? Um, they're going to want to see her shooting percentage go up just a little bit. They're going to want to see those leadership skills. But Ariel, without question, um, has an opportunity to be a pro. It's just going to depend on at what level as a pro. Your fans will get a chance to see you part of Fan Fest. That'll be on the 24th, a uh, couple Saturdays from now, or Saturday from now as this, as this airs. Um, also, Heels and Hoops that same night. So it's going to be a busy October 24th for you guys. Tell me about the events. Typical great opening day for Memphis basketball. Um, the Fan Fest, I think they're still working out a few of the details, but it's going to be an interactive autograph session, both men's and women's programs at the Forum earlier in the day. Then we're going to go do a little costume change, so to speak. Go to Heels and Hoops, which is our major fundraiser put on by our Fast Break Club. Um, we will begin our social hour at 6.30, and then the doors open at 7 with the fabulous Steeler Band. And that's at the University of Memphis Holiday Inn. How can people get tickets? You can go online. You can call the um, Go Online ticket office. We are selling Heels and Hoops single tickets for $100 a piece. You can buy a table for $1,000. Um, the tables are going very quickly. We're anticipating between 350 and 400 people. So I heard, Ariel, it's a Halloween theme. So what are you guys going to do about the theme? You're going to, you're going to dress accordingly? <laughs> um, yes, well, we have a little um, dance routine up our sleeve, something I don't want to reveal yet, but it's going to be a great night with our boosters. The players always open up the event with, it's a, it's a dance, so the players open up the event with their own little dance to put everybody in the mood. It is a Halloween theme, so the dance will also be a Halloween theme, and you're not going to want to miss it. How nice is it to, once in a while, you, you get away from basketball, you're out there, you're competitive, you're sweating, you know, and then you get up and you get nice and dressed and proper like a, uh, a woman does and, and looking good and having your fans out there to see you in, in that sense. Uh, it's great with our boosters. They love us. Um, they say all the time we make their day, but I think truly they, we, they make our day. Uh, Hills and Hoops is a great night to spend with them and our coaches. Like you said, it's a time to relax and just be yourself off the basketball court. And that night we see a lot of personalities from within our players and our boosters. You see a lot of heels about, about, about this high, too, <laughs> <laughs> from the players. Oh, do, do you worry? Oh, my gosh, they're in heels. All I need is a twisted ankle, God forbid. No, we'll, we'll be fine. Uh, cost of attendance. New, obviously, Memphis and the American is part of that. We know the Power Five and the money they have uh, to be able to to do that, now you have uh, other conferences following suit. As I said, the AAC is part of it, Memphis is part of it. Uh, how important is that? I think it's critical. We have players um, on our team in the past who truly, just from a, uh, I'm not talking about an elaborate lifestyle. I'm talking about a regular student lifestyle that maybe didn't have the funds for that. Now, not certainly not all of our players, but I think we all would agree that for the time 
in the commitment that our players make to our university, we would like to help them out a little bit financially. We've also done a few other things um, with the additional funds that they're going to receive. We've done a lot of financial planning because I've told our players that this truly is life-changing money. Mm -hmm. If you're responsible with it, this is hard-fought money. It's university money. It's donor money. Um, it's, not, it's not free, so we want to make sure that we're good stewards of the money that's been given to us. Well said. Memphis Fan Fest on the 24th during the day. Heels and hoops in the evening at the University of Memphis Holiday Inn. Melissa, it's always a pleasure. Ariel, great job today. Thank Looking you. forward to watching you and your senior season out there. Thank you. That's thank Ariel you. Hearn. That's Melissa McFerrin, the University of Memphis women's basketball team. We thank them for joining us. Coming up next is Overtime. Now some pigskin. The Tennessee Vols are enjoying a bye week after rallying from a 24-3 deficit last Saturday to post a 38-31 victory over Georgia at Neyland Stadium. It was a complete 180 from earlier results this season when UT blew double-digit leads and losses to Oklahoma, Florida, and Arkansas. Head coach Butch Jones had been under fire before his team came through with their win over the Bulldogs and was in pretty good spirits when he sat down to chat with me earlier in the week at the Touchdown Club of Memphis. Butch, great to have you in Memphis, as always. Well, it's always great to be back in Memphis. How gratifying, how satisfying was that victory over Georgia? Well, it was a great victory for us for a number of reasons. And first and foremost, our players. We've been through a lot, and I think it really showed the resiliency, the resolve, the character of our football team by which we were able to come back against a quality, quality opponent and find a way to win a football game and finish the game off. Was it hard or relatively easy to keep the spirits up for these players, for this team, for this program, after the tough luck losses you've had? Well, we've been in some tough games, and uh, four of them have come down to the final possession, in, uh, or final quarter, in three final possessions. So it's been, a, it's been a, a great year in terms of developing how to finish. Uh, but really, we have great character in our football program, great competitive character. And really, all this has done is it's galvanized our football team and our football family. And finally, they were rewarded for all their hard work and diligence. So is the secret getting behind? Is that what you need to do? <laughs> well, I don't like that either. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, but you know what? It's just a consistency and performance. Uh, each and every time we step out on the football field, whether it's in practice or obviously in competition on game days, uh, but we're learning and we're getting better. I see us making progress. The bye week's coming at an appropriate time. We're really banged up right now. And you look at our offensive line, we've had individuals that have really grinded their way through. And then we're playing Georgia, a very talented defense and the right side of our line are comprised of true freshmen both at the right guard and right tackle position with Chance Hall and Jack Jones, and then obviously the, all the freshmen on defense. But the kids are doing a great job, and our older players are really stepping up now. Injuries part of the game, but you really have had to deal with a lot, not just those injuries. It seemed like even before the season, right. you would lose players. You had to dismiss a player recently. Yeah. I, I know it's part of the game, but that has to really add to your <laughs> frustration well, of trying to put together a game plan each and every week. Well, you're exactly right. I and mean, we're still in the infant stages of building our football program and you build that being nine strong. We talk about power of the position and every position group being strong. And right now we're working to build that competitive depth and we're, we're limited at some positions in terms of depth. So anytime you have an injury, that sets you back. And when you lose your team leader, Kurt Majit, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for someone else to step up, and I see Brian Randolph stepping up in that role. But, you know, those are positions that we can't lose key performers. But that's, like you said, the game of football, and it's another individual's opportunity. We saw your quarterback put it all together against Georgia, accounted for all five touchdowns. Some would argue, hey, hey, Coach Jones, Butch, unleash this guy. We saw his ability. We know his ability. How 
how excited are you to see him put it all together? Well, great. You know, I see a great competitive spirit in him, and he really willed our football team to win. And that's what we need from him, and that's what we need from the quarterback position, and everyone believes in him. And uh, we had players step up and make plays around him, too. You know, the best play Jalen heard all night was a third and nine where he has to go pick up a corner blitz, which allows Josh to stay in the pocket right. and Alex Ellis down the middle for a big critical third down conversion. And that's what we talk about, playing complementary football in all three phases. What do you think it is when you go back and you look at tape and discuss what's going on with your team and your, and your assistant coaches, your staff, about not being able to finish earlier in the season? Right. And obviously, you got the monkey off the back on, on Saturday. Well, I think a lot of people just look at the end of the games in terms of finishing, but in the world of football, you know, you can finish in the first quarter, you right. can finish in the second quarter or the third quarter. And sometimes a football game will come down to two to three plays that make a difference. Really, there's been about eight to ten plays that could have made the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just having that consistency and performance, that focus that sometimes a young football team will lose in maintaining that focus for four quarters for overtime. But I think I would challenge anybody in the country that's played the schedule that we've played. And like I said, three of them have come down in the final drive and four of them the final quarter and arguably the Arkansas game the final drive as well, which would be four games. And that's why we have to be able to keep things in perspective too and the progress that we're making. You know, the players see it and I think that's what allowed them uh, to go in and compete like they did against Georgia is they see the progress that they're making each and every day. And Butch, you do a great job in keeping things into perspective. You've never wavered. The positive attitude's always there, even with those tough losses. When you hear negative things said, right. when you have people throw rumors out there about your character, yeah. how do you respond? Well, people who know me know me, and they know what I'm all about. And most importantly, it's our players and, and everyone associated with that. And, you know, we're going to do things the right way, and it's very unfortunate in the world of Twitter and blogs and, and all that that goes on, and that's part of keeping the distractions from your football team. But I don't get caught up in all that. I have a job to do, and, you know, I work for a great fan base. I work for a great institution, and I most importantly work for our players each and every day to work to put them in positions to be successful along with our coaching staff and build a great culture, and we have that. What do you think you can get accomplished? What can this team do the rest of the season? Well, this bye week is coming at the right time. First and foremost, we have to get healthy. And then we have to go back to the fundamentals. We have to improve our tackling, our takeaways on defense, leveraging the football, and then offensively the same thing, just the overall execution and continue to grow and develop each and every day. It's going to be a challenge, obviously, with Alabama being the first game off the bye week, but the bye week's coming at the appropriate time. Who has been the biggest surprise for you? In terms of player-wise? Yes. You know what? Uh, I would say just uh, the freshman class in general. Uh, they've done a very, very good job, and uh, they've had to play in some critical moments, uh, the maturity, and I think that they've been aided uh, by the maturity and the leadership of our senior class and our older players, but been very, very pleased with our entire freshman class. Butch, I'm sure you saw the news today about Will Greer, who's gone for the rest of the year, uh, barring the appeal. Um, you played them, obviously. You had them down. They ended up coming back and winning. When you, when you see that you played a, a team that had a player that probably shouldn't have been playing, what do you think? Well, I haven't really given it much thought. Actually, I just found out when I got off the plane. Wow. So, you know, I know this is Florida's a, a very talented football team. They're one of the, the better defenses that we've played all year. I thought we had a great game plan. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to finish the game and, and get the victory. But uh, I really haven't given that much thought. Tennessee has an amazing fan base here in Memphis. Yep. Great recruits as well. How important is this city for you? Well, it's critical. You know, it's part of the great state of Tennessee. Have tremendous respect for all the high school coaches in this area and all the great high school football players. And that's why any opportunity I get a chance to come back to Memphis, I'm over here. You guys are a coaching fraternity. All you coach, you know probably just about everyone. If not, you'll you'll meet them yep. one day when you when you see a story, uh, the struggles of, of a Steve Sarkeesian and what's happened to him, 
uh, again, being in that coaching fraternity, right. it must be rough for all you guys to see a fellow coach uh, have, have the struggles that he's having. Well, you're exactly right. It is a fraternity, and pretty much everyone knows everyone. And uh, if not, you build those relationships with different events. But it's very unfortunate and, and wish him well uh, and all that. But uh, this is a tough profession. And uh, it's a very close-knit profession, and you know half of your your profession loses. You know, and unfortunately, you're you're gauged by wins and losses. That's our profession. That's the profession that we chose. But it's also a very rewarding profession when you have the opportunity to shape lives like we have the opportunity to do. Always great to have you in Memphis. Always good to talk to you, Butch. Always great to talk to you. Thank you so much. That's Butch Jones. And the Volunteers return to action next Saturday at Alabama. The Memphis Tigers and Ole Miss Rebels went at it earlier today at Liberty Bowl Stadium in one of the biggest regular season games in University of Memphis pigskin history. Of course, we taped this program earlier in the week, so we obviously have no idea as to the result. The Tigers were hosting a ranked team at the Liberty Bowl for the first time as a ranked team. Memphis was number 22 in the most recent coaches poll. A couple of other quick notes. Steve Spurrier announced that he was stepping down immediately as the South Carolina head football coach. Florida quarterback Will Greer was suspended for a year for the use of performance-enhancing drugs. And Ole Miss star left tackle Laramie Tunsil will be eligible to play next weekend versus Texas A&M after missing seven games as an NCAA penalty for several rules violations. And that's going to do it for now. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.